meeting is being recorded. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so with me today on the line is my manager, Steve Martinez. He'll be addressing any questions that you may have. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank you for joining. And um, if you have any questions, what we're going to do is uh, we'd ask that you post them to the Q&A panel, uh, not the chat window. Um, Steve will be moderating the uh, the Q and A panel, um, and if you need to get to that, you can just go into the WebEx itself. There's a, a an icon for three dots that'll allow you to access the different panels, and you can open it from there and post your questions. And, and then we'll, um, if there's anything that we have not addressed throughout the session, we'll uh, we'll address them at the end of the uh, toward the end there. All right, um, so here's the full list of the uh, Tableau Tuesday series, and obviously we're in November, so we're going to do highlights from the last few releases as part of the product update. You also notice that we did this back in May, uh, so this is our second product update of the year. Um, and the, the reason that we're doing two is because if you look at our pace of innovation, we're actually releasing um, about a quarterly cadence now. Um, this is actually the first time that we'll have released four versions within a calendar year, um, <clears throat> though it's also the second time we'll have released four versions within a 12-month period. Um, and so back in May, we covered uh, 2018.2, 2018.3, and 2019.1. And today we'll cover uh, what's new in 2019.2, .3, and .4. And then we'll also take a peek into uh, some of the, or a very quick peek into what was covered uh, at the devs on stage uh, with, uh, within the, the Tableau conference last week, just to show you what's coming down the pike in the next uh, 12 months or so. And um, <clears throat> I'd like to showcase this slide for, for a couple reasons. Um, in addition to just seeing the pace, um, I, what you also understand is that uh, we've changed the naming conventions. This is going back about a year or so, but um, or two years, I should say. Uh, but we've changed the naming conventions on our, on our, our versions. Um, we've done this for a couple reasons. Number one, it's obviously a lot easier to understand where you are within the product hierarchy uh, based on just the version name itself. Uh, 2018.2, that came out in the year uh, 2018 in the second quarter-ish, give or take. Um, it's a lot harder to do that with 10.5. It's a lot harder to do that with 10.2 and that type of thing. Uh, you usually have to look it up in the release notes. Um, and also, I uh, just wanted to point out that the way we've changed the, these releases is now we have three or four really key uh, functional features that we've released or, or, or product enhancements that we put into each one, along with several other minor ones. Um, and so you get those new updates on a quarterly basis, uh, as opposed to before where it seemed like there were one or maybe two somewhat monumental releases on a yearly basis, which meant, which meant that there were a lot of updates within one particular release. And from a development standpoint, um, there's actually a benefit to us because it means that if uh, development of a particular feature is delayed for any reason, it doesn't have to wait another full release cycle to get into the product. It doesn't have to wait another six to 12 months. It can always ship with the next release in, in two to three months. Um, and from a customer standpoint, it makes um, upgrading uh, significantly easier because you're not gearing up for uh, a, a large monumental release with 100 new features and trying to get up to speed uh, across the board um, every single year. It's a lot easier to piecemeal that, and, and you can even skip a couple releases if needed. But like I said, today we'll be covering 2019.2.3 and .4. And so I'll try and highlight uh, um, all, the, all the, the new enhancements that we put into the different versions, and then we'll get into some demos. Now, obviously, we won't have the time to go through each of these one by one in terms of, uh, um, in terms of a demo, but I'll try and provide descriptions for each, and then we'll get into the demo of some of the, the highlights there. Uh, so within 2019.2, we've got kind of the four distinct uh, categories around visual, anal uh, visual uh, uh, analytics, mapping, uh, web and mobile, and then data. And we'll go through these uh, just so you see what the, the key features were. Starting within the visual analytics, um, I'd say the, the biggest component here is going to be something called parameter actions. So you now have the ability to visually change a parameter's value. Uh, previously, you could only change a parameter value uh, from an input like a text box or a radio button or something like that. And it, if you're familiar with set actions, which was um, released in 2018.3, it's a very similar concept because it takes the, the next step for 
uh, dashboard or worksheet actions beyond just filtering. It's, it used to just filter between a source and a target, and now you're taking that uh, the concept of the action of a source to a target and applying it differently by changing parameters. And so, really, there's an infinite number of use cases for this, and once we get to the demo portion, I'll actually um, sh uh, show you a couple of resources where you can learn more about these in greater detail and see some, some practical examples. Um, but you can drive reference lines, calculations, filters, and, and really any sort of interacting um, with, uh, with marks on a viz, bringing that interactivity to your data like never before. And so like I mentioned, it's kind of similar to set actions in 2018.3 because they can now be thought of as a um, really storing a single value through interactivity and then ha <clears throat> having that value affect something in your view. Um, one of the other nice uh, key components to 2019.2 uh, is this show hide dashboard containers. Um, we've listened to the community and certainly we understand that um, I think we all want the ability to uh, create a dashboard and, and, and the layout to be very similar to something like PowerPoint and that, that can come in many forms around uh, pixel perfect layout but uh, one of the, the expansions that we've made is on this show hide dashboard containers. <clears throat> so this will allow you to maximize your real estate with the flexibility to toggle between a visible and a hidden panel for any floating container on the dashboard. And so you can streamline what content viewers see, such as instructions or filters or legends that uh, seem to take up a lot of real estate and are very, very useful for a, a quick period of time. But then after that period of time, it'd be nice if they could kind of exit stage left so that further analysis could be done on the main portion of the view. Really, just to point out, all objects that are able to go into these containers can be shown or hidden, and this includes things like URLs, uh, extensions, other containers um, even, and um, like I said, even filters or um, uh, parameter controls or, uh, or legends or anything like that. It's very simple to do, and we'll see a demo of this uh, towards the end of the, the section here. In 2019.2, uh, users can now add phrases to an existing query in Ask Data. And so this includes uh, removing or replacing or even deleting all phrases from an existing query. And so um, additionally, calculations can now be made directly from Ask Data. So you can, you can actually add and subtract, uh, multiply or divide two different measures. And we'll gradually expand that, but you see down there in the bo at the bottom, we're creating the calculation of sum of sales and sum of profit in the, in the image there. Uh, show hide sort controls. Um, so authors can now preserve the, the sort order that they've set on their worksheets uh, just by disabling that ability to, to do the one-click sort. Um, and that way they can rest assured that the end users are, are always interacting with the data the way that they were in, that they intended it. Um, and that, that, that way they get the, the best dashboard experience. Uh, replace worksheets in a dashboard. Um, obviously you could always replace a worksheet, um, but now we're making it a lot simpler with pretty much just a one click. Um, so you can simply highlight a uh, particular dashboard on the view as you see, we've highlighted the bar chart in the bottom. And then as you hover over the, the sheet name of the sheet that you'd like to replace, there's that, uh, that icon for swap, and it will just do the direct swap and preserve the layout, preserve the aspect ratio and the dimensions of that particular uh, sheet on the, on the view so that you don't have to fumble through that or uh, essentially reinvent the wheel by going through the, the same uh, sizing that you went through uh, with the initial view. Uh, and we've also uh, expanded the capability for uh, some minor customizations around reference lines. Um, so you now have the option to customize tooltips for reference lines, uh, and that all obviously also applies to bands and distributions as well. And so you can edit the tooltip text or choose to disable it completely. Um, but the same capability you had around the label, you know, for um, by including the field name, the field value, or any comp or the computation or any text that you wanted to include. Uh, you can apply that same uh, same principle to the tooltips as well. Uh, now, as we move on to the mapping section um, <clears throat> with uh, with 2019.2, uh, we've actually incorporated vector maps. 
Um, so these vector tiles allow the map to be rendered crisply and smoothly, no matter the scale. And ideally, users probably wouldn't notice it just by looking at a workbook. Uh, really, what they should notice is significant improvement when interacting with the workbook. Uh, as you pan or zoom, you'll see it's a lot smoother. And then you also obviously have some different uh, capabilities that are put in around the map layers. And again, we'll see this in, a, in an example shortly. Uh, just wanted to point out, we're also switching the demographic data that ships with Tableau Online and Tableau Server and in Tableau Desktop as well. Um, you also now, if, you're a, if your database is Postgres, or a, um, you now have the ability to uh, use spatial data directly from it. Uh, so there's no need to export or uh, pre-process the data, for lack of a better term, uh, before diving into it in, tab into ta in Tableau. Um, you can just perform more advanced spatial analysis with the ability to uh, just leverage the spatial operations supported by the database. And along the lines of mapping, you can now turn latitude and longitude values from text files, Excel, or any other data source into spatial fields and use them in spatial joins. Um, so we've added a couple calculations, and in this case, you're seeing make point. Um, but uh, with make point, you can uh, spatially enable text files and Excel spreadsheets, making it easier to, to aggregate your data and, and, and plot it out accordingly. And uh, we've also done the same thing with a make line function. Uh, so customers are now able to create that origin destination flow um, with, uh, with greater ease. So you don't have to prepare, you don't have to duplicate your data uh, the way you once ha had to in order to make path marks. Uh, you can just now use data as it's commonly stored with the separate lat long pairs for the origin and the, des and the destination. And um, certainly the application of this could be in the form of you know, flight paths, uh, you know, logistics or delivery maps, and, and, and obviously countless, countless examples as well. And with every release, we're always looking to expand our, um, our reach in terms of the data connectors that we provide or that we, uh, we, we support natively out of the box. Um, and we're also looking to optimize and, and enhance the performance. In this particular release, uh, you see a couple of uh, uh, the key ones here around SAP HANA, uh, Marketo. So there are certainly more, um, more tables that are accessible in, our, in Marketo. Uh, we've optimized the JD JDBC connection for better memory utilization. Um, and then as far as ServiceNow, you actually can con uh, connect to on-premise ServiceNow deployments too. And then switching over to web and mobile, um, one of the key things is uh, the biometrics for Tableau Mobile. So obviously you can sign in once uh, and then rely on Touch ID or Face ID for that future authentication. Uh, so it certainly makes it a lot easier, especially as we've all kind of uh, become used to that functionality for, for the authentication piece, regardless of which uh, app or application we're, we're, we're authenticating into. Uh, you also, in 2019.2, can export stories to PowerPoint. Uh, I believe it was in 2019.1, uh, or it might have even been 2018.3, but you could export to, uh, sheets and dashboards into, um, into PowerPoint, and we've taken that to uh, story points as well. Um, and so, uh, really, you're leveraging the ability to uh, create a presentation-ready deck in just a matter of seconds and each story point will appear on its own individual slide. And we've made some significant enhancements to, to the browsing experience to Tableau Server and Tableau Online. Um, in this case, with this version, uh, we've included the ability for a site start page. Um, previously, the start page can be set at the, the user level or the server level, but not at the site level. Um, and this prevents admins from customizing the landing flow per site on a, a multi-site deployment. And it's also it, it also meant that um, there was no site customization at that level for Tableau Online. And so we're adding that as a way to kind of bridge the gap. And then I mentioned the um, just the overall experience of the, the Tableau server, Tableau Online interface. Uh, we have a new browsing experience. And so you essentially 
uh, land, if, uh, if, if you will, at a, a new home page, um, and it displays personally relevant content up front, uh, favorites, recents, and you'll see some other uh, improvements that we've made uh, in the subsequent versions. But we've got a new left navigation that makes it easier, it makes it easier to quickly access your, your favorites, your recents, and discover new content and popular views. And then we've also taken the ability to create custom views, which was previously only available to creators and explorers, that's now available for viewers as well. So you can save that private custom view in a dashboard that you care about, uh, filter down to just the information that you want to see, <clears throat> and then uh, jump back in and get the information that you need quickly and easily every time without having to reset those filters. We've also taken the ability to, um, that previously only existed in Tableau Desktop, and that is uh, create, ed, create and edit parameters. We've made that accessible in the browser. Um, so obviously one of the other enhancements that we look to do with every release is um, basically um, have desktop and server or online have full parity. So that's a kind of a development path that we've been working on for, for some time. And with every subsequent re release, we try and close that gap a little bit. Um, and so this feature was added for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, in terms of that web parity request, it was in the top five, and it was actually um, the top searched item in the web authoring search bar within Tableau Online. So it's clear that the user base has been wanting to uh, be able to create parameters straight from the browser without needing the, the desktop piece as well. And then um, we've also tailored the, um, the, the data-driven alerts view. Previously, uh, like you see in the screenshot, there was the alert button, which would pop up the, uh, the ability to set that alert. Uh, but we now have kind of a side panel that you see on the right-hand side, which allows you to manage alerts. Um, and also, uh, you can see more, more than one alert at, at the same time. So if, um, if someone actually has an alert that's been made public, you can just add yourself rather than recreate it. And then finally, within 2019.2, uh, uh, we've uh, incorporated something called Admin Insights into Tableau Online. And so that's a project that's uh, populated with curated uh, and published data sources that allow site admins to create that custom admin view experience um, and also leverage a starter workbook just for monitoring and, uh, and, and maintenance. So let's actually get into a, a, a demo of 2019.2. All right, so I'm going to start in Tableau Desktop, and we're going to start with just the, um, the, the parameter actions. So here I've just got a simple worksheet, and you see it's just simply um, sales by region and year, uh, actually down at the monthly level, but I've got two... Um, I've got a dual axis view, so I've got a line uh, and a bar chart. And really what I'm curious about is to see if, okay, this particular mark, this uh, South 2016 uh, sales, which is 33,000, whether or not, or I guess um, how it relates to the other marks. Is it higher or lower? And obviously that's just one example, but as I mouse over a particular mark, I kind of want to get that instantaneous um, idea of where it sits in relation to others. So <clears throat> I'm going to create a, a simple parameter, and we'll just leave it as parameter 3, float is fine, and I'll say OK. And then we'll show that control. Now what I'm going to do is go up to Worksheet and then say Actions, and this is where you see the new feature. So when I say Add Action, you'll see that it's now allowing me to change a parameter. And the parameter that I'm going to change, this target parameter, is going to be that parameter 3. And I want it to apply to the sales field, aggregated on sum. And I'll say OK. And actually, I'm going to go up, I'm going to make one more change. So let me edit this. And I'm just going to uh, run the action on hover instead of select. And that means that as I 
mouse over a particular mark, you'll see that that parameter control, that text box over here, changes dynamically, <clears throat> which is great. That's only half the, the, the half the um, half the equation, but it's at least showing me that it is dynamic. So now what I want to do is tie in a reference line. So I'll bring over a reference line. And we're going to say it's going to control that parameter 3. And we'll just get rid of the, the computation. We won't apply the tooltip for now, and I'll leave it as fill below. And now you'll see that line move dynamically based on that selection. So that's really what the parameter, uh, uh, the parameter action is doing. And I want to take this one step further <clears throat> by creating a simple calculation that will show me um, very quickly or highlight when, when it's actually over or under that. So I'll just say if parameter 3 is greater than sum of sales, then um, over, else, under, and say end. And then <clears throat> on that um, that second uh, mark type, the the uh, the circle, I'll just color it accordingly. And now you'll see it's pretty dynamic. So that as I mouse over, you'll see um, <clears throat> it's easy for me to tell if something's orange. It means that the sales are greater in that particular mark than they are for uh, for my selection. So let me show you a couple of other examples that are out there. Uh, that we won't have time to really get into in detail, but uh, the, they're great references for later on. Uh, this is actually a little bit old, but uh, still very applicable. Uh, but this is a blog that was written right around the time the parameter actions were uh, going to be released. They were in beta. And there are several examples, year-over-year -year comparison. And I apologize for scrolling on the WebEx, but I want to get down to a couple that I think are really applicable. Um, but here's that year-over-year -year comparison where you make a selection, and you'll see it highlight accordingly based on that dynamic selection. A couple more others to, uh, to be mindful of. Um, this, uh, this interactive, um, where is it? Yeah, the, uh, the input control down here. So it's just a nice way to um, incorporate something like a uh, kind of a custom slider. And then you see the example above uh, that's actually the dynamic reference line. So it's just giving you a little bit more customizable activity. And then there are a couple of other blogs that um, that I think are uh, showing some really neat examples. Um, again, we probably won't have time to go through these in detail, but we'll make sure that the, these uh, these links are available after the fact. Um, but these these could just be dynamic highlighting. There's actually um, someone in here that uh, put together um, uh, forecasting the race for the Senate, and again, it's kind of a dynamic highlighting approach. Um, but really good write-ups and uh, just so good reference points if um, if you want to explore further. But for now, let's get back into uh, Tableau Desktop. <clears throat> and I'll show you the, um, the containers. And what you'll see here is I've, I've obviously got my map. And then over here, I've got the hamburger bun menu. And if I hit Alt in my, my mouse to expand that, you'll see that that's actually where my, my filters and my, uh, my legends exist and I'll collapse that. And really all, all it takes to do that is to pull out a container, make it floating, and then you can say add show hide, hide button. And it's very subtle, but uh, there's a, an image of an X, which you can expand, you can swap out that image. It's basically a button, so you can edit that. And then all you would have to do is drag whatever elements you want into that container just to collapse it. And then the way you actually collapse it is with uh, the Alt button on your keyboard. I apologize for any Mac users. I don't know what the, 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 the equivalent would be, but we can certainly find that out. Um, and when you hold down the Alt button, expand or collapse, it will do exactly that. So uh, just for the sake of uh, cleanliness, I'm going to get rid of that uh, as we move on to our next item. And that would be to uh, replace a worksheet in, uh, in a dashboard. So here I've got my map. 
and I've just highlighted the map and you'll see here that if I wanted to swap it out with forecast all I have to do is hover over and use the swap sheets and it'll do a straight straight swap no resizing no reformatting or anything like that um, so it's literally just kind of a one-click approach whereas before you might have to drag uh, that uh, that forecast out and then remove the map and then you may have to uh, contend with the layout containers it's all right there just with the uh, uh, the one piece all right let me undo that and let's go back into the uh, the map and you'll see here that uh, let's get let's get it a lower level of granularity there we go and as we get into the map options first off now you'll see that the full list of um, of map options or uh, uh, map layers that are there and so you can if you have an eye for it, you can understand the uh, the subtle differences between the previous version and uh, and the new version here. But even just with the uh, the scrolling and the zooming, make this a little bit bigger. Um, it builds a lot cleaner. It uh, it, it it certainly is a um, you don't notice the panels like you did in the previous versions. And the same thing is there for um, yeah. So if we just want to do uh, not highlight it. Let's go. There we go. Yeah. So the map layers as well uh, for uh, for the different uh, styles there, as well as the different uh, map layers that you could incorporate. Um, just for the sake of time, I'm going to pivot over to the uh, to the server view because I know we still have two more versions to go through, and uh, there's quite a lot out there. But here's kind of the um, the the new alerts view. So once it renders, I've got the alerts, and now everything is shifted onto this alerts panel. So if I were to come in here and say, let's click on an alert, or click on an axis and create, that's fine. And I can also add other folks and make this visible to others. And now this is kind of a managed alerts page. You'll see here that it's actually got, uh, got the one there. Um, if I wanted to do... Uh, another one. We'll just leave it. And now you'll see these listing out one by one, so it's a lot easier to take action on them and kind of see what's going on and even uh, add yourself or remove yourself if someone has made their own alerts public. Um, so it's uh, certainly a nice, uh, nice way to uh, to achieve that. And then um, as I come here uh, this is the, the 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 new browsing experience uh, we've gone through several iterations and I think that we've we've arrived at a, a really good layout with Tableau server now so obviously obviously you see the landing page with uh, with the home and then um, explore favorites recents we'll get into recommendations in a little bit the same thing with the external assets um, but it just makes for a cleaner experience and not only that, but it allows the user to customize it the way they want. So if they only want to look at uh, just workbooks or just single individual views or data sources or uh, all projects, um, they have that, that freedom and the flexibility to do that. Uh, obviously, we all look at, uh, look at our own kind of landing spot uh, and interact with it differently. Um, I know that I've used other people's machines and looked at their Windows Explorer and it just feels completely foreign. Um, so I have my own personal preferences. Now you have that same capability within Tableau Server here. All right, so let's get back into the presentation and get into 2019.3. And the, um, the biggest thing within 2019.3, I'd say, is something called Explain Data. So Explain Data automatically provides AI-driven explanations for um, unexpected values or uh, trends or outliers and that type of thing really with just a single click. So it's available as you create a viz uh, or a dashboard for that matter and it uses powerful methods of uh, to really bring to light statist statistically significant explanations behind a data point. Um, and I've got a, a working example that I'll show you momentarily but it's really designed to take the data exploration to the next level um, because ultimately what it's doing is it's kind of guiding you along to identify what might be a viable path for that exploration. 
We've also taken ask data to the next level with uh, the ability to embed it. <clears throat> and so you can put this in your company portal or uh, just really any page. Um, so it allows uh, even more people in your organization to be asking questions of their data. And this is really the logical next step of ask data because it tr it's, a, it's a capability that's truly for anyone and everyone. And now it can be accessed anywhere through really just through that embed process. Uh, the feature that we just talked about momentarily, parameter actions, we've already improved it uh, in the last 10 minutes here. Um, it basically just got more powerful with uh, a couple different ag aggregate functions, first quartile, third quartile, and concatenation. Um, and you also have the ability to create new parameters directly from the parameter action dialog, so you don't have to uh, back out if you've already gone, gone down that process. Um, 19.3 enhancements with mapping. We've uh, we've updated our, our functions library even further and created um, a distance calculation. So now you can easily measure the distance between two points. Uh, it's perfect for measuring the length of a flight, shipping routes, kind of like we talked about in the previous version. Uh, but now it's just a, a calculation that exists within the library within Tableau Desktop and, and Server. And you can also um, now convert uh, coordinates for locations, which might be in feet or meters, into latitude and longitude. Um, so the Tableau can visualize and use that in spatial joins. Uh, a good example of this is the Seattle Police Department logs location data using a local project in um, US feet. And now you can use the, uh, the make point to convert it directly into usable lat long coordinates. And then getting into the uh, data piece, I'd say the, um, the, the biggest component, in addition to explain data, but the biggest component to the platform is something called Tableau Catalog. Um, and the first thing that Tableau Catalog gives our, our customers is visibility into all the data used in their environment. So Catalog automatically indexes and um, allows you to discover all the databases and tables that are used within worksheets, data sources, uh, really all the way through. And so it allows them to be understood by anyone who's who's consuming that. And it also provides the lineage and the impact analysis so that um, if, an, uh, if an update needs to be made to a database table for whatever reason, um, you can start to understand how impactful that's going to be downstream. And we'll see a, a working example of this momentarily. Um, but a really unique aspect of the, the catalog is that the metadata flows all the way through, like I mentioned. And so when people access a dashboard or a visualization, they get that insights about the quality of the data. They can find out where it comes from and understand what the data means. So there's there, uh, you have the ability to put in definitions around that, status messages, any sort of updates. And so the trust factor is there between the backend support team and the users who are leveraging those connections. And it helps uh, creators and explorers quickly, really just quickly find the right data for analysis through that enhanced search and discovery uh, directly within the, the authoring experience. Um, and so we'll see more of this um, as we get into the demo when I think it'll be really impactful. Um, a couple of the key things that we've put in for Tableau Prep is we now allow you to connect to published data sources with Prep Builder and Prep Conductor for that matter. So you can build flows with all the data in your in your Tableau environment. And so this is another way that we're just expanding the list of connectivity options that you have within desktop and, and prep. And obviously with prep, we're, um, we're, we're trying to, to close the, the gap so that there's full parity between Tableau desktop and prep. And that also means that we're, um, we've now allowed for Tableau prep to uh, create, really create a step to run an R or Python script in Prep Builder and taking advantage of the data science within your workflows. And then we've also put in uh, connectors for Databricks and Google BigQuery. Uh, so now you can do all your data prep for, for those sources um, directly with uh, natively and optimized based on, uh, based on these connections. And then with Tableau uh, 2819.3, 
we have a new search results page. Uh, so it's a lot easier and a lot cleaner to find what you're looking for faster. Um, if we have time, I'll show you this as well. And we're always looking to um, make simple, uh, simple things even better. So the export to PowerPoint improvements allow you to sel select relevant specific dashboards to integrate into your presentations. And see, so now you can select which sheets and dashboards or stories uh, to export instead of just at a, the, the high level there. Um, improved content sharing. Historically, you could only share uh, really workbooks or um, or the, by actually going into the into the individual worksheet. Um, but now you can share any piece of or any content, any object within the Tableau server, or Tableau online uh, UI. And uh, instead of just having to go into your browser and copy that URL, uh, you can right click on the object in question and copy the link and then you'd have that to, to be able to share with other folks. And then uh, we also have made it possible to publish embedded data sources. Uh, so as you see here, you can quickly and easily publish it just by uh, opening the workbook, right clicking on that data source and saying save as a published data source. And then that will be stored on the server for others to reference inside of their, their content as well. A couple other quick changes before we get into the demo. Um, we now have, uh, and again, this kind of ties back to the parity question between desktop and server, but now you can set context filters uh, on the browser so it improves the web authoring experience and the performance of the workbook for that matter. One of the key things that uh, we know users have been asking for for quite some time is the ability to have PDFs and subscriptions, and it's now here in 19.3. Um, so yeah, it's just right there from the, from the subscriptions menu. You can consolidate your workflows with the option to receive that in the same way that you would uh, an image um, it, as just part of the subscription flow. And then from a back-end standpoint, we've also incorporated something called uh, that we're calling Tableau Server Management. Um, and so basically what it allows for is, uh, you know, we have new tools that help our customers get the most out of their server and monitor those, those servers and stay ahead of any sort of action items that need to be, uh, be addressed. So this is improved monitoring capability, and I'll highlight this in a couple of examples. We also have a, um, a content migration tool as well so that it's a lot easier to move content between one environment to another, such as a, a series of workbooks that need to go from a dev environment into test, into production, and you can do that without any sort of programmatic uh, interference there. Um, what you're seeing here is another component of the server management, and that is, um, it's really the resource monitoring tool. So it's, uh, it's allowing, uh, the, or really enabling, I should say, the, uh, the server admins to understand really at a glance what's going on in terms of the hardware, in terms of the user activity. It's all just built into the same UI. So it's kind of streamlining the, their flow as, instead of dealing with log files and custom admin views, um, along with the, the out-of-the-box admin views, they have the ability to streamline this into something a little bit more consistent. And then there's also enhanced security that's been tied in um, in the form of encryption at rest for extracts. Um, and then of course, uh, security keys as well. So let's actually get into a, uh, a demo here. All right, and oh, let's go back into uh, Tableau Desktop. And let's start with explain data. Uh, so this is just a pretty simple view that we've created. This is just sales by category and region uh, and subcategory. And you notice that you know, the two outliers, right? We've got the, the dark blue and the dark orange. Um, Tableau's exceptional at pointing out those or, or really bringing to light those outliers. Uh, so you can start to sense the, the patterns and the trends, but what do you do with them, right? There could be a, a really a thousand different reasons going on with why this particular mark has such terrible profitability. Um, you know, we all might look at this and think to go in different directions. One might think to go 
into a, a, a level deeper. Hey, is there a particular product item level that uh, that's bringing everything down? Some might think to go geographically. Some might think to go time-based and say, hey, is this a trend? Um, and those are really just three high-level ones. We could take this a number of different ways. Well, what Explain Data tries to do, and the way you access it is just by the tooltip and hitting that light bulb, it tries to analysis to, to recommend which path you should explore. Um, so what you're seeing is it's immediately and, and impactfully generating a new workbook with some descriptive information. And what you see here is it's analyzing the different dimensions and measures that are available within the data and saying, hey, is it something around profitability? Um, and, uh, you know, just in terms of uh, a hard delineation between unprofitable and profitable, maybe it's the number of records. But I also thought it was pretty compelling that it's saying uh, Texas has a distinct ratio of records. Um, so that may be something to explore. And then, and that's just on the sales side, but even on the profitability side, the same thing. And what you'll see is, okay, there's a, a the average profit is significantly different between Texas and the other categories. So not only is it suggesting that maybe in terms of your explanation as a next step, um, out of all those possible paths, try going the geographic route, specifically within Texas. This may not get you the ultimate answer, um, but it's at least identifying something from an algorithm standpoint that really should, uh, that really does warrant further explanation. And the nice thing is it'll actually build the views out for you. So as I click on that, uh, that expand to open as a new worksheet, you'll see that it's actually created the views, rendered the caption, and allowed, allowed me to have kind of a jumping off point for that, uh, that next step in my question. Very, very powerful feature, and uh, um, I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's something that uh, most people would, would really enjoy. So now let's get into um, the, the Tableau server interface, and let's go into uh, the Tableau catalog. So first, let me start with uh, just the, the basic Tableau server interface, and as we talked about in the previous version, we've updated the, uh, uh, the navigation experience. We now have this tab for external assets. And as I click on that, what you'll see here is that there are actually um, five different databases that are being used. And so I'm going to click on this Superstore one. And what you're seeing is the, the, the details around Superstore, specifically which tables it includes, along with some descriptive information, and then more importantly, the lineage. So these three tables within Superstore are accessed by three different data sources within Tableau, which are then leveraged by four different work, workbooks and 26 worksheets. And so now, as a back-end support person, as an IT person that manages the, uh, the data source curation, I can have some understanding of the impact. So if I were to make a change to any one of these tables for any reason, who's it going to affect and how? And the flip side of that is if we access this from an end user standpoint, I have my, my dashboard that I'm looking at. And now I have this data details tab. I'll wait for this to render here. Uh, but now I've got this data details button <clears throat> that allows me to see uh, the, the, the full description behind it. So now I can see the, the name of the database, the fields that are used. And more importantly, let's think about this in a, in a live scenario, right? This doesn't exist in a vacuum. So as we pivot back over to the IT person, they're going to need to make a change, right? So they're going to need to update this database for whatever reason. Maybe there's some field that needs to be updated, this product name field. Well, that's going to allow them to say, let's uh, go into the, the quality warning and enable this warning. Let's, let's communicate with my end users to say, hey, look, be aware that we are going to um, maintain, uh, put this database under maintenance with the following status message, and then say save. That uh, at the end of this week we're going to be updating the um, this this database or this this database table, 
and specifically this column. And there's that under under maintenance message that's now there. And then again, let's flip back over as an end user. Let me just log out or uh, exit out of this and come back in just so you see what that impact is. I think I could have just refreshed the browser. But ultimately what's happening is instead of a user just looking at a dashboard and thinking that it's a black box in terms of where the data comes from and how it's managed, I now have visibility into that. And because I can communicate both ways between the, the IT support person and the, the user of the dashboard, being able to communicate through the data details, there's that, uh, that, that trust that exists so that I understand the impact of a change that's ultimately going to be made. And I see that under maintenance message, and I can see the, the, the full details there. I think I might have a permissions issue that I'm contending with, but I think you get the idea. All right, so now let's pivot back over to uh, over here. And let's just say that uh, as far as the share content, you'll see that I now have the ability to see on any object, whether it be a data source, whether it be a workbook, in this case, it's a, a project, and say share. And I can just highlight the URL, copy the link, and send it on. And that's available for any object that's, uh, that's out there. All right, and in the interest of time, I'm going to move on to uh, 2019.4, and then we'll quickly highlight what was covered in uh, uh, the, the devs on stage keynote for, um, for Tableau Conference. So for 2019.4, uh, again, we've added some new connector connectors specifically for the LinkedIn Sales Navigator and then um, the Alibaba Cloud. And then we've also enhanced the capabilities around or, um, or optimized the, the connectors for the, these three data sources as well. So things like SAP HANA, they now have a leveled hierarchy support. And then um, from a uh, prep standpoint, we've also included the ability to connect to cloud uh, data sources like Box, Dropbox, et cetera. And then getting into IT and governance, uh, one of the key things was um, extensibility. So you now have webhook support. So you can create automated workflows triggered by events as they happen with webhook support for Tableau Online. And so um, the possibilities are endless, really. You could build a workflow that alerts users of new content through Slack, uh, which is actually what we're seeing internally quite often, um, or automatically create cases with, uh, within ServiceNow if, uh, if an extract fails. View recommendations, uh, it's actually uh, one of my new favorites. It's uh, personalized suggestions that instantly connect you to relevant data uh, and content that exists on your site. And it's powered by machine learning, so it's another area that uh, machine learning is evident in the platform. Uh, but they match, um, they match preferences between users surfacing the content that others like you have found interesting or, or what's trending as well. And then uh, the, the new site mode blocks user-to-user -user visibility within a site um, so that users from different organizations remain anonymous to one another. And so that way creators and admins see other users to help manage the, um, the site users and the content and the permissions. Um, and then subsequent to that, uh, <clears throat> we've all probably dealt with something where you've been, uh, you've tried to access something that, um, or have been told about, but uh, you have no access. Now there's a, an ability to request access that enables users to send that request message to, uh, to the content owners when they're locked out or they don't have permission to see a project or a, a workbook or a review. And then uh, we've also allowed for uh, custom welcome banners to be uh, set up in Tableau Server and online. Um, this, is, I imagine, will be the kind of the first foray into this, but you have the ability to tailor your message uh, so that it's a little bit more personalized for users on the welcome screen there. And then uh, one of the biggest components of 2019.4, uh, one of the most requested features, I should say, is table improvements. Uh, so you can create a table with up to 50 columns. That's right, 50. Uh, it's up from six. With uh, And it's also got the ability to scroll horizontally. 
Um, and so for, for flat tables, you can also sort entire columns by the dimensions or discrete measures across multiple panes. And so we'll look at this uh, in a live view momentarily. And then ask data improvements. Again, this feature first was introduced in 2019.1 in January, but it's something that you can now enable or disable on a per site basis. And we also have kind of the categorized suggestions, which um, which I'll show you, but it's basically, as you see here, we've got the breakdowns of date and time, filter, and the viz type. And then also allowing you to do year over year and month over month calculations. Um, and then uh, explain data, which again was released in 2019.3. Uh, we've enhanced that to uh, incorporate geospatial data um, and calculated fields as well. And then a couple points about uh, the, the, the improved authoring experience. Uh, so there's an ability to see where a sheet is used within a workbook. I think we're all um, uh, all guilty, for lack of a better term, of having uh, really a, a large number of worksheets in, uh, in a workbook. And to understand the relationship between where, um, uh, where it's used is, uh, is certainly a time saver. And then uh, we've also incorporated a delayed loading functionality so it shows um, so anything that's that's hidden in those containers um, will be delayed when it comes to loading it uh, or from the initial load I should say and so you can imagine a complex dashboard that takes longer than desired to load uh, if you don't need every worksheet to load at the same time you can you know toggle those containers to uh, to redesign your your dashboard for faster loading And then a couple quick points before a, a demo. We have uh, incorporated the ability to create extracts in the browser from live connections. Um, and then we've also uh, uh, gone further in terms of the parity by allowing users to update the map settings and edit tooltips directly from the browser. Uh, and then lastly, we've incorporated uh, data quality warnings for, uh, for Tableau Mobile. Um, so with uh, just a couple minutes left, I want to get to a quick demo of the 2019.4 capabilities. And we'll start in desktop again. And uh, you see here I've actually got a, um, a view that, that I've already built, just so we can save time from building it. Um, but as you see, that's certainly more than six columns of data. And it's got that horizontal scrolling, and so it's doing that without the concatenation. And then it's also allowing me to sort uh, directly within the view uh, any way, shape, or form that I want. And so this is uh, almost like treated like an um, exactly like an Excel or a pivot table. And then uh, as I click on this any worksheet, you'll see that the new menu option for used in so you can start to see exactly where it's actually used and go directly to it so that's where the the sheet is used and then um you know what i realized i forgot to show the uh, uh the, the the server management piece so i do want to highlight that very quickly so for all the admins out there you'll see here here's the server that i've uh, that i'm managing and I can come in and look at the environment and select my time frame. Let's look at the past five days. And I can start to see the performance. I can see concurrent usage, um, the, the Tableau processes, the load times, and really have that visibility in. Uh, and I'm not going to do this justice within uh, the, the last couple remaining minutes. But we'll make sure to uh, provide uh, resources out there where you can learn a little bit more. All right, um, I'm going to quickly move on because I know we're running uh, short on time here. And just wanted to um, highlight a couple different things. First and foremost, uh, a, a great resource is uh, the, the all products page, and that is tableau.com slash products slash all dash features. And really what that is, it's a microsite version by version that allows you to understand the features that are incorporated into it. And it'll also have kind of an animated GIF, uh, potentially a link to a blog uh, that, that explains it a little bit more detail. Um, so it's always a great resource to bookmark. 
We do the same with uh, what we call Tableau coming soon. So tableau.com slash products slash coming dash soon. And that is for what we're working on in the beta. Uh, seeing that 2019.4 just came out a few weeks ago, the beta is still not open for 2020.1, uh, but keep an eye out for that. And um, many of you are probably aware that uh, we just finished up our Tableau conference last week, and that incorporated devs on stage, which is everyone's favorite uh, keynote, where they start to explain what they're working on uh, for the for the next set of releases, if you will. And that uh, that can be found on this blog, but one of them is going to be animations, as you see. Uh, it's just a simpler and cleaner way for uh, for the for the viz to load based off selections. And again, sorry for the uh, for the scrolling here, um, but I'll try and highlight every the, the, uh, the most that I can. Um, but we've got uh, within Tableau Prep, we have rank capability, um, LODs that have been included, uh, and then reusable steps. I think that are some of the uh, the, the most well received capabilities. And then uh, relationships, which is really more of uh, related to the Tableau object model. Um, so it allows for better joining capability. Uh, again, we can uh, we can give you some details on where to find more about this. <clears throat> and then um, lastly, there, uh, well, I'll, I'll save the best for last, but uh, there's some additional management aspects around uh, Tableau Server. Uh, but I think what got the most or the, the biggest reception is dynamic parameters. Uh, so that was uh, announced at Devs on Stage and then it is planned for next year, and you saw it, and if you were at TC or watched the uh, the keynote, uh, you saw it live within a, a working function, so it's um, it's set to come out soon. Um, so with that, I know that uh, I ran a little bit longer than I was planning. Um, let me uh, just reach out and, and ask uh, Steve how the, the questions are looking and if there are any that we need to address here in the last few minutes. No, Rob, I think I, I got everything, so we're good to go. Okay, great. Um, well, here, let me go back to the uh, presentation. And um, just a quick plug that uh, next month, Tuesday, December 10th, we'll finish off the year with the Tableau Tuesday series around uh, product tips and tricks. And with that, uh, thank you everyone for, uh, for joining today. Hope you found it helpful, and we look forward to seeing you next month.